What's going on everyone? Ray Del Vecchio here and we're going to talk about WordPress plugins because they are the easiest way to add functions to your website and quickly create the exact features that you need to succeed online and they're the first place that you should look after you reach the limits of your theme options. Since I transitioned to WordPress after learning code, the number one mistake that I made at the beginning and continue to make to this day it's wasting time trying to develop these solutions manually. You know, a perfect example is social media icons and share buttons. I tried to do this with like 20 hours of work, hard coding it with HTML and CSS, testing out a few layouts. And of course, I realized that there was a plugin that was one button click away from giving me pretty much the exact same solution with even more customization options. Here's my advice. Don't be like me. <laughs> Think like a beginner and find the easiest way to build an effective website. So with that in mind, let's go through the 15 best plugins to improve your WordPress website in 2019. The first two on my list are ones that I install almost immediately on every website. And number one is really simple SSL. This is gonna forward all of your non-secure HTTP requests over to HTTPS. And to do this, you must have an SSL certificate Almost all major web hosts today offer that for free. And if you want to upgrade to get your business name shown with the green padlock in the browser bar, you can get a better SSL certificate. And this is useful, especially if you're selling online, you have a major e-commerce store. That's something you might want just for user trust. Let's jump over to the plugins page. I'm going to show you the link below. So right now I'm on wordpress.org slash plugins. And this is where we can search for over 50,000 plugins. I'm going to search for really simple SSL. And it's the first one that's going to pop up. You'll see that it's got a five star rating and 794 reviews. So when I'm looking at a plugin, I'm generally looking for a few things. I want to see that it's been updated relatively recently. So this was updated a month ago. I want to see the number of act active installations. So this is over 2 million, which is pretty massive. If, if I see anything over you know, 50,000 or 100,000, I'm generally willing to test it out. And then obviously the ratings. I want to see how many 5-star ratings there are and how many 1-star ratings there are. And this one, it's pretty heavily favored towards 5-stars. Of course, you're going to get some negative people in there that are leaving the 1-star reviews. But if I see this 1-star review bar like halfway or a quarter of the way, that's going to give me pause. So those are a couple things you might want to look for on this plugins page. So we'll move on to the next one. And this plugin is called Child Theme Configurator. Once I choose my theme that I'm going to use to design a website, the first step before I do anything is create a child theme because all of my customizations are going to go within that active child theme. And this is the right way to design your website because this is going to completely separate the parent theme from the child theme which means that you can update the parent theme without worrying about overwriting any of your work or any customizations that you've done. Let's check out the plugins page for child theme configurator and on here we have 200,000 plus active installs and on the ratings we have 187 five stars with only 12 one stars so this is gonna pass the test and this one's really easy to use I just released a full tutorial building a website using Divi and within that I use this plugin child theme configurator so I'm gonna link that up here within the top right I'll do that also for some of these other plugins because I have a couple of tutorials that might match up with these so let's move on to the third plugin number three is a plugin that almost every site can use it's called Yoast SEO and SEO stands for search engine optimization so this is going to let you customize your post titles and descriptions. Put a bunch of keywords in there that people might be using. Obviously you want to write it up naturally, you don't want to write it like a robot. But this is what's going to get you more traffic from Google. And they have a lot of other features. One other useful one is that they automatically generate a site map for you. So let's check out their page. And you can see the popularity from here. They have 5 million plus active installations. It was updated a day ago <laughs> and they have a ton of reviews under five stars but they have 23,000 five-star reviews so that outweighs every other one 
And I can tell you, I've been using this plugin for a long, long time. I mean, I think they've been around since almost the inception of WordPress. So I highly recommend them. Next up is W3 Total Cache. And a cache plugin, put really simply, it's just going to optimize your website and increase the speed. It does this in a number of ways through caching, which is basically saving copies of elements from your website so you don't have to load them from the database. It'll compress files to make them smaller. And Minify, which is pretty similar, it's going to remove all the white space and any comments and make all your files as small as possible from that regard as well. The other cool thing that they do is integrate with a CDN. So a CDN is just a content delivery network. Basically, a CDN is almost like a web host, but it's specifically designed for your static files. So that's going to include your images, maybe CSS files. And really what it does is it, it creates duplicates of those files across maybe 10 or 15 different locations. Depending on where the user is loading the website, it's going to load from the closest location and it's going to be the fastest. So CDNs are a really easy way to improve performance outside of the standard settings within W3 Total Cache. And you can do this for free using Amazon CDN. It takes a little bit to set up. Definitely look into that if you want to speed up your website. Let's review their plugin page. They were updated nine months ago, so it's been a while since they've updated this, but it has over a million active installations. And in terms of reviews, this one does border on <laughs> a lot of one-star reviews, but this is such a complicated plugin. It takes a lot to set it up and do it the right way. A lot's going to depend on your host. So there's a lot of ways to do this wrong and not get some of the optimizations that you might expect. That probably factors into why the ratings are not, uh, you know, mostly five stars and four stars. I would just Google a few guides for how to set up W3 Total Cache for whatever hosting environment you're using. Number five on our list is definitely the most timely for 2019, and this is the classic editor plugin. WordPress released their 5.0 update just a few weeks ago from when I'm releasing this video, and that comes pre-installed with the Gutenberg editor, which is a completely new post and page editing experience. So if you aren't comfortable with that or you just want to take some time to adjust to it, you're going to want to install this classic editor plugin, and they're going to keep this supported up until 2022, or they said they may extend that if they need to support it for longer. This classic editor plugin has a lot of active installation, so you can see there is a huge demand for reverting from the Gutenberg editor to the classic editor. It's at 2 plus million right now. And as I said, that's likely because a lot of people probably upgraded to WordPress 5.0 and they didn't even realize <laughs> that their entire editing experience was going to be different. So I, I recorded my first time updating to Gutenberg and going through that. I'm going to link up that video here. So definitely check that out if you haven't been through that situation yet. And just looking at the reviews, people are really happy with this plugin. So it's 400 five-star reviews and they barely have any one-star reviews. We'll move on to the next plugin. Number six is Elementor, which is a drag and drop page building plugin that makes it a lot easier to visually design your website versus using the standard editor. They have styles for a wide variety of content types. It's a lot like Divi, the theme that I just made a tutorial with. I guess the main difference is that it, you can use it with any theme. I think Divi just extends a little bit further and is more of just a complete page builder from top to bottom, whereas Elementor is only going to work more on your content elements and modules. I used this to do a tutorial last year, so I'll link that video up here. Looking through the plugin directory, there seems to be like 20 other child plugins available for Elementor. I don't even know what they do, but obviously there's a lot of support for this plugin. And you'll see why in a second when we go over to the active installations. And like a lot of these page builders, they have a pro upgrade if you like the way that you can design a site with it. They give you a bunch of features that you might use if you're creating multiple websites or advanced features for one website. Here's the plugin page for Elementor, and they have over a million active installations. So they might be, I would say they're at least the top three popular page building plugin. And there's probably like 20 others that you can choose from. I'll go into another one with the next plugin on our list. 
But you can see here they have a lot of five-star reviews and not so many one-star reviews. So they're very popular, and I really liked using Elementor. Having learned Divi this year, I prefer Divi a little bit to Elementor. I feel like the styling's a little bit better. They have more ability to customize. Either one of these is a great way to build your WordPress site if you don't know that much about code and you're not that good with design because they have a lot of pre-built styles. Next up is Beaver Builder. So this is another page building option if you want to try something other than Elementor. This isn't one of the most popular builder plugins. They got a lot of active installations, but it doesn't really compare to Elementor. But the thing is, I got a lot of positive feedback on this from several of my subscribers. So just the fact that I heard from many subscribers saying that they like using this to build their websites, I wanted to include it on this list because it obviously is doing something right. Unfortunately, I can't really compare it to Elementor, but you can kind of test out either if you're just getting started to figure out which one you like better. So let's browse the plugin page for this. I got to make a correction. I mentioned that they didn't have a comparable number of installations to Elementor, but they, they really do. They have 500,000 plus. I had them confused with another one that was at like 100,000. So I thought Elementor was about 10 times the amount, but it's just about double. And judging from this little screenshot up here, the way that you build a page looks a lot like Divi. On this uh, page, they have a video, so you can go through to give you a quick overview. And the other cool thing is they have a Facebook group and a Slack channel with people that use Beaver Builder for their websites. So if you have any issues, they might have a better community than Elementor. I didn't really look up or search for the Elementor community. I'm not sure if they have a Facebook page. That might be something to consider when you're making your decision. Number eight is Contact Form 7. I probably should have made it number seven. But this is one of the oldest contact form plugins available on WordPress. They've been around since the beginning, and they're really reliable. Because they've been around so long, there's a lot of support online, either through their website or other forums where people ask questions. The only limitation, in my mind, is the design. They don't really have a lot of options to design the form, so you kind of need to do that manually with CSS. Since I know code, that's no problem for me, and that's why I've stuck with them for many years. This has got to be one of the most installed plugins. It's got over 5 million active installations updated three weeks ago. It supports Google Captcha to reduce spam. And you can see a lot of people don't like this form. I feel like contact forms are kind of controversial. People are either going to love them or hate them. And because of the spam element, you know, not every form does spam filtering the same way. The bottom line is if you have a website out there with a contact form, you're going to get some spam. It's likely not going to be perfect, but that's something you just got to deal with when you're uh, living the online life. <laughs> Number nine, this is a, a really simple plugin. It's just for embedding your Instagram feed, and the developer of this plugin also has a Facebook feed plugin, so if you like the way this one operates, you might want to grab that one as well. Number 10 is Sumo, and this is one of my favorite plugins. It's more of a marketing plugin because it's got a bunch of services that will help you optimize your lead generation methods. And a few ways they do that is just by collecting email addresses through pop-up forms. They have social share buttons and like five or six other really cool marketing tools. I think they do full email marketing integrated within Sumo, but I use MailChimp for that. So if email lead generation is a big part of your business, I would absolutely check out Sumo. If you're developing an e-commerce website, WooCommerce is by far the number one e-commerce plugin for WordPress. They mention on their homepage that they power 30% of online stores. But because they're the biggest, they have so many options for extending it. You can buy these extensions on their website to add more features specific to whatever your situation is. Number 12 is Duplicator which is a really easy to use plugin to backup and migrate your website. You can do this if you're switching hosts. And I created a full tutorial showing you exactly how to do this step by step. They get you set up with a wizard that takes you through each step of the process and it's pretty hard to screw up. So I'll link up my video if that's a situation that you find yourself in. 
Number 13 is iTheme Security, and this was previously known as Better WP Security. This is pretty much an all-in-one security plugin that does a suite of services. Some of the most notable are two-factor authentication. They're going to prevent hackers from logging in multiple times. If it, you know, if it sees the same user or IP address logging in and failing, it's going to block that. The other thing it does is forces SSL. So if for some reason you have this installed, you probably don't need to install really simple SSL. And the last two are community plugins that you might want to add to your website if you want to have community interaction. So number 14 is BBPress, and this is forum software. And it was originally built by the founder of WordPress. They note that it's a, it's a lightweight plugin, doesn't have a lot of code or overhead, so it shouldn't really slow down your site all that much. A newer plugin to add social networking features is BuddyPress. So this is described as a social network in a box. You can have users connect with each other, send messages, start groups. They have a home screen where they see an activity stream. I only have experience with BBPress. Right now that's installed on my website on a private member forum for my web design business plan members. A link to that will be in the description below if you want to check it out. So that's all I got for this video. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there's 50,000 plus plugins. So if I didn't mention one that you like, leave it in the comments below. And if you're ready to get started with WordPress and building your website, I'm partnering with HostGator to give you the best deal when you register for a one year term. If you need to set up website hosting, go to hostgator.com slash WPC1. That's gonna give you the deal automatically applied. Or if you get to the HostGator checkout page another way, you can just use the coupon code WPC1. I also mentioned earlier in this video that I put out a full tutorial on how to build a landscaping website with Divi. So if you still haven't decided on what WordPress theme to use, I highly recommend you check them out. Go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash Divi, and that's going to take you to the gallery where you can view a bunch of websites that have been built with Divi and some of the features that they offer. I'll also link on my tutorial in the description below. Lastly, if you build websites for clients or you're freelancing with your web design skills, I have a cheat sheet on my homepage, the 15 tools to start your web design business. You can download that from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel to get more WordPress, web design, and freelancing videos. I really think everybody at some point in their life should create a website. It doesn't have to be a technical thing. It could be about a completely non-technical hobby like gardening. But this is where the future is headed. This is where business is headed. So these are skills that you got to learn. And building your website is, in my opinion, one of the best introductions to business because you can touch every aspect of business through a website. I really want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. And I hope to see you on the next video.